I would like to welcome everyone joining us from all over the world today on this webinar led by Lawrence Bernard from Imperial College London. In the next approximately one hour, we will go over the academic offer, student experience and current situation at Imperial College. At the end of the session, uh, we will be here to answer all your questions, which you can ask in the chat, which you can see at the right hand side of your screen. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to let Lawrence introduce Imperial College London. Thank you for joining us. Great. It's great to be here. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today for this webinar. So my name is Lawrence and I'm an international officer here at Imperial College London. And I hope that you are staying safe uh, at this time. And if you have any assessments or exams coming up, then also to wish you Good luck with those. So the video that we started with gives a bit of an idea of a day in the life of Imperial. That's obviously during normal circumstances when our students are able to be on campus. So I'm working remotely at the moment and uh, hope that this will be an interesting session for you. I'm going to talk about what makes Imperial unique, what we offer, um, how to apply, what we're looking for, all important question, and some key updates as well. And whether you know exactly what you want to study, or you know Imperial really well, or maybe you're just starting the process and you're thinking about the UK as a study destination. Maybe you're thinking about, um, you know, just considering Imperial as one of your options. So um, please, um, yeah, do stay with us and hopefully this will be really interesting for you. So you can see there's a poll there at the moment, but we're going to have some audience polls throughout here just to help me and help us get to know who's in the audience, um, what you are you know, particularly interested in, what subjects, are you interested in the UK, um, you're interested in studying in London, these kind of things. So they'll pop up throughout the webinar. So just feel free to respond to those as we go and any other useful information and uh, details will also be uh, arriving uh, to you and, and handouts and polls throughout the session as well. So with that, I'll get started into the presentation. So this is an aerial shot, of the main campus in South Kensington. So if you're to come to study with us and when we are back to normal, then you're going to be right here with us in the heart of London in the area called South Kensington. So I've got some key points about Imperial. So these are some of the key things that set Imperial in part from, apart from other universities. So as a student, really important to think about, you know, what do you want from your study offering? And if we have any counsellors joining us today, you're very welcome. Um, hopefully give you a bit of an overview to help you, you know, in advising students, is Imperial the type of institution uh, for the student or, you know, to help you give that advice as well. So first of all, fantastic London location, really important to mention. So there's a tower just below the N of location, and that is the Queen's Tower, and that's the very center of the campus. And the rectangle of buildings immediately around that, that is the main 
Imperial College buildings. So that's where you'll find the library, that's where you'll find our labs, all the different department offices, cafes, students union, restaurants. So it's easy for you to get from one side of campus to another, um, easy to bump into people, to go from having a coffee with friends to being in the library, to going to your lecture, and then maybe back to the library or, or grabbing some food as well. The top bit of the screen, just under This is Imperial, that is um, Hyde Park. So well-known part of London, so it's very green area, easy, really, really easy for you to walk to or cycle through as a student. And the dome building just below the M of Imperial, that is the Royal Albert Hall. So you may have heard of it, but it's actually a famous concert venue in London, but it's also where you'd have your graduation ceremony when you come to study at Imperial as well. So it's a very green area. Uh, it's quite a cultural area as well. At the bottom, there's actually where you find the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, the v &A Museum. So if you have been to London, been around South Kensington, you may have walked past Imperial's campus without realizing it. So we are right in London, we're right in South Kensington, we're well connected to the very centre, but also it is quite, as I was saying, cultural, green, a bit quieter than being, you know, just off Oxford Street or the, in the very centre of London. And we do have everything you need as an undergraduate student in one location. So you're able to really, you know, be focused in one particular area um, in London and you, you know, don't need to, to go to your classes. You won't need to go all over London to go to that. So that means you have everything London has to offer, but we also have a campus, a campus atmosphere, a campus community as well. Another thing that feeds into that is the fact that we are a specialist institution. So we focus exclusively on science, engineering and medicine at undergraduate level. So if you heard Imperial is quite good for those things, that's actually because that's all we're offering at undergraduate level. You can probably see behind me, this way, behind me, uh, we have business on the banner as well. So Imperial does have a business school, but at the moment we're only offering postgraduate courses. So that's a master's or MBA course. So perhaps after you finish your undergrad, you could come to study business at Imperial, um, but at undergraduate level, the main areas are across science, engineering and medicine. Um, although there are some opportunities to take business modules as well uh, through, through the business school, but it wouldn't be a full course. And because we have this, this focus, it's firstly unique in the UK. We're the only institution with a specific STEM, science, medicine focus. But that gives us that unique atmosphere on campus as well, that actually, whether you are working on group projects, getting to know people in your first few weeks, it's really easy to find something in common with other students. And we'll often hear from our student ambassadors, that's something that they really enjoyed about coming here, is that whether they're studying physics and someone else is doing engineering, actually it's quite easy to have a frame of reference to understand projects that are working on, understand the things that you are really particularly interested in when it comes to uh, the sciences or when it comes to your subjects as well. So again, that is quite unique. So um, if you're someone that is really passionate about science, who um, loves being in that kind of atmosphere and community, then it's definitely something that you're gonna find at Imperial. We are a world top 10 university. So I guess ranking isn't the only thing to look at when you're considering a university, but it's something that we're very proud of. Um, what, the, what that means is that we have a strong reputation throughout the world. So whatever you would like to do in the future, whether that is study, continue studies, master's, PhD at another top university in the UK or overseas or continue at Imperial or to work in industry, or start a business, whatever it might be, and Imperial education is really well uh, recognized and really well seen um, across the world and across different industries as well. So it does mean that our competitive, our, our programs, sorry, our programs are competitive to enter um, because we have that ranking, but it's not just, you know, when you graduate, it's not just about, oh, you've been to Imperial, it's just, just a brand name. It's not just a brand name, actually, employers and other universities really recognize the skills and um, what you'll have learnt and the type of graduates that are coming out of Imperial as well. So um, it, it you know, does have a reputation for hard work, but you're going to be able to come out of it with so many opportunities in the future. We're also known for our research excellence, so we're a research intensive university. Um, we're a Russell Group University, um, so that's a group of research intensive institutions in the UK. So, and it's not just, you know, research in general, it's actually research that has a real impact, real world impact as well. So I highly recommend if you're interested in that, having a look on our website, some of the most recent research stories, 
But to give, I guess, the most up-to-date examples, because we have that STEM science focus, Imperial academics are working on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic that we're currently living through at the moment. So I guess the highest profile one is the team of virologists at Imperial, who are one of two universities in the UK. Um, and they're led by Professor Robin Shattuck, who, are, who have received funding to develop a vaccine for COVID-19 as well. So again, we have more information online, but that's a really uh, recent example of the real world impact that Imperial research is having. But it's not just something that's happening at a very high level. It's something that you have contact with as a undergraduate student as well. So if you are interested in research, you're going to be learning from leading academics who are undertaking research in their discipline. We also have a research opportunities program as well. So if you would like to get involved in research, if you think maybe doing a PhD or getting involved in something like that in the future is of interest to you, then you could join our undergraduate research opportunities program to get exposure to that as well. And that takes place during your summers of your study at Imperial as well. And then all of our courses in the final year or final two years, you'll have specific research projects to be working on. So we want to, as you progress through your course, you'll have more and more independent study and independent research as you go on as well, which prepares you well for industry. But also if you would like to, you know, continue with your studies and your research to a PhD uh, and beyond level as well. We're one of the most international universities in the UK. So that means a few things. Um, obviously we have a really, you know, audience of people who come really coming from all over the world, all different backgrounds. So if you enjoy studying in an international environment, studying alongside people that have a different first language to you, come from a different cultural background, um, maybe studied a different educational system to you, you're definitely gonna find that at Imperial. So at the moment we have just under 58%, so 5, 8% of our current student body come from outside of the UK. So we, students are coming from Europe, from Asia, South Asia, Australasia, Middle East, Africa, the Americas, really from all over the world. So over 130 different nationalities you'll find on campus. So within your classes, within the student accommodation, you are going to find people from all over the world, make friends with people from all over the world as well. So coming to study at Imperial, it's a very international environment, international teachers, but we also want to give you international opportunities to further internationalize your degree as well. So that comes through a, a few forms. So we have opportunities for study abroad. Now they'll depend on the department, but some will offer you the opportunity to go abroad for a full year, and some might just be for a semester or a period over the summer as well. So it's worth having a look again online at those different sites or you can download the prospectus, um, which is just popped up as one of the handouts to have a look at what's available in different departments. And we tend to have partnerships with other top technical science universities around the world. So I guess two really good examples would be MIT in the US and also, also ETH Zurich in Switzerland are some key universities we have partnerships with. And many courses give the opportunity for a work placement internship or work experience on the course. Um, and you can also choose to do that abroad as well. So we have a team to support you to find experience in London, in the UK, and also to support you to go overseas as well, if that's something you'd like to do to go back to your home country or actually to go to another country as well. And the final thing I want to mention that kind of makes Imperial stand out or perhaps makes us different to other institutions in the UK and around the world is we have really, we're really strong for enterprise and also for career opportunities and career service as well. Um, so we're known for being one of the top universities for graduate prospects in the UK um, with high starting salaries, um, with a high employment rate. Um, part of the reason, as I mentioned before, we have, you have that, um, you know, we have the reputation and um, the skills that you're going to gain at Imperial are going to be really valuable. But we have a great career service that's available to you from day one of starting. So if you're coming in, maybe you enjoy chemistry, but you really have no idea where you could take that as a career, you'll have access to advice, you can access work shadowing opportunities. Each year we have seven themed careers fairs, so you can go along, pick up information, maybe in the first year you're just browsing, seeing what's out there, and in the final year there could be certainly be opportunity to get 
aware of what graduate schemes there are, what job opportunities there are for you to take on in the future. And that career support, advice, workshops um, you have available throughout your studies and for three years after you graduate as well. And in terms of enterprise, if you are someone who would like to start a business, maybe you already have a business idea, our Enterprise Lab is the best resource for you to be able to do that. So they run workshops, advice sessions, competitions as well. Um, with prize money to help kickstart an idea. But maybe you're someone that's just interested in entrepreneurship in general, or you maybe see yourself, I don't, I'm kind of interested, but I don't really have ideas. That's absolutely fine as well. You can definitely get involved. They have what are called pitch and mix events, where students can come along if they're interested in entrepreneurship in general. And there'll also be some students that are presenting and they'll be presenting, okay, this is my idea. I'm looking for this type of team or these are the type of skills that I'll need. And then you can actually be there and maybe you can actually partner up with someone who has a specific idea and um, because of your skill set because of your interests as well and work together so it's something they really encourage um, lots of exciting competitions that are available um, as well in the enterprise lab and so we want to support you um, at imperial whether it is further study research whether it is going to work in industry or whether it is starting something new or perhaps even a mixture of those things in the future of your career so i think those are the kind of key things that i'd love you to to take away or be able to bear in mind and um, when you're thinking about imperial so i'm just going to share some more specifics of okay what courses are we offering uh, at imperial so we have three faculties that represent those three areas of specialism engineering natural sciences and medicine so first of all we have our faculty of engineering so we offer 10 distinct engineering disciplines at imperial you're not able to do a general engineering course. So you do have to choose a specific area of engineering. So we have aeronautics, bioengineering, chemical, civil, uh, computing and computer science sits within that faculty, design engineering, earth sciences, electrical, material science, and mechanical engineering. So if engineering is something you're interested in, then hopefully there's gonna be an area that you're gonna be particularly interested in applying to. It's really worth having a look in, our, in the prospectus if you downloaded that or having a look online to look at the different specialisms that are offered within each one. So with aeronautics, for example, we have an aeronautical engineering course and we have a specialism within spacecraft engineering. Um, within computing, we have a more general computing course. There's also a specialism within artificial intelligence and machine learning. So it's worth having a look at what we're offering in terms of those different specialisms as well. Uh, and some people do ask me, oh, how do I decide? I don't know exactly what type of engineering I'd like to do. So we have lots of resources online and I'll be talking about some of those later for you to do more research, get to know what's available on the Imperial courses to help you decide, okay, which one am I going to apply to? Because obviously it's much easier to make a strong application to just one course than a range of different types of engineering when it comes to making the application. So I'll give a little bit more detail about the applications later. The only other thing I wanted to say about engineering is that they're offered as a, across all the courses, as a four-year MEng. So you may have seen that, that's M-E-N-G. And MEng is a Masters of Engineering, and it's an integrated Masters. So it'll be four-year program where you start at the entry level, the bachelor level, but you'll come out with a master's degree. And that's the same equivalent level as a master's, an MSc master's program as well. Some courses also offer the three-year BEng, which is the Bachelor of Engineering as well. But you have that option across all of our courses to do that integrated master's. So if you're thinking of being a chartered engineer, working in industry, going into research, then it's something that is often going to be looked for in the world of engineering as well. So that's an important thing to, to note as well. Next, we have our Faculty of Natural Sciences. So if you're more interested in traditional science subjects, we have the life sciences. So that includes biology and a number of different specialisms, including microbiology, ecology as well. We have our biochemistry course and our biotechnology course as well. So there are three different ones, biology, biochemistry, biotechnology, then chemistry, mathematics, and physics. Again, at Imperial, it's not possible to apply to do a general natural sciences degree and choose modules from different disciplines which some universities in the uk offer you do have to choose just mathematics or just chemistry just physics etc 
So we do have that specialism as a university, but you're going to be very specialised during your studies as a student as well. Now, obviously, across all of our courses, you have a range of different module choices that you can make, particularly in the final or final two years of your course as well. And again, it's worth having a look in the prospectus at the different specialisms that we're offering here. So chemistry, we actually I have a general chemistry course again, but we have a chemistry with medicinal chemistry. We offer mathematics with a specific focus on statistics or applied mathematics. Our physics course, you can do physics with theoretical physics as well. So it's really worth having a look. But again, across all those programs, you have that those options in the final year modules to take specific modules. And often they're going to be linked to the areas of research expertise at Imperial as well. So we want that to be really closely linked as you'll actually have a chance to do independent research during your time studying with us as well. And then the final faculty is our Faculty of Medicine. So there's two courses here. The first one is our Medical Biosciences Programme. It's a three-year bachelor. It is a biomedical science programme. So we just call it slightly differently at Imperial. But if you're interested in biomedical science, then it is the Medical Biosciences course at Imperial. This is one of our most innovative programs in terms of teaching. It doesn't actually have any traditional lectures. You have what's called flipped learning, where you will do some study. You'll be sent a, a kind of an online module to study before coming to the class. And then you come to the three hour class session. You'll be developing research hypotheses, working in groups, but you have that whole time with lots of access to the academics and the research assistants and lab technicians to ask your questions. Was there something that you want to go deeper into in what you studied? Was there something you didn't quite understand? You have the opportunity to do that. And obviously you have time in the labs from the very first year. So our courses are that mixture of theory and practical, which makes sense because of that STEM specialism. So you're going to be spending time in labs, in workshops from your very first semester studying with us. So we don't build up to, to doing that. And finally, we have our medicine course. So this is the Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, the MBBS, which is a six year course at Imperial. You have patient contact from the very first year, from November of your first year. So that's why just for medicine, you do need to be 18 when you start the medicine course. All of our other programs, if you won't be 18 when you start the course, that's fine. But because of the, um, the safeguarding, the protection for patients, you do need to be 18 to start the course. And this one, you'll actually get the, the MBBS degree, but also a BSc degree in a specific area of medical sciences that you'll be studying as well. Um, you have all your clinical placements in hospitals in London. You don't need to go out to other cities as well. Um, and it, obviously, it's a, it's a very strong and very popular program as well. OK. So hopefully that's of interest. You have a good idea of the courses that we're offering, what our specialist areas are. Um, now, maybe you, you are very familiar with the UK application process and UCAS, maybe not. Um, but I'm trying to cover the specifically entry for Imperial. But a lot of this is going to be relevant to applying to UK universities in general. So bear that in mind. The first thing we're going to be looking at are the entry requirements. So when you make your application, you apply through a system called UCAS, you'll be able to put in your details and what you've studied previously, but we're going to be looking at your predicted grades. So what are your predicted grades first and foremost? And that's going to differ across our different programs. But just to give you an idea, so I've got specifically here A-level and the International Baccalaureate. If you don't see your qualification there, you're doing something else, don't worry. I've just given those two as examples um, and either by contacting me by email or asking in the chat, we could give more information about some other qualifications as well. So in A-levels, we're typically looking between three A's up to two A stars and an A. So again, it depends on the course, but that's the typical range. And then in the IB, we'll be looking for 38 to 42 points overall. OK. And that's out of the full 45. Um, however, we're often going to have specific subject requirements, and that's true for all of our courses. So this will be a specific A-level subject, a specific IB subject, or another whatever other qualification you're doing, if we accept it, but for the specific requirements. So most engineering programs, we're going to ask for a specific grade in your maths and in your physics. So it might be you need to have in the IB high level physics seven, high level math seven. Uh, for our medicine course, you'd need to have a uh, 
A level, it's in the A levels, you need to have an A level in biology and in chemistry, both with at least grade A. So again, in the prospectus, if you downloaded that, but also online, you'll be able to see not just the overall that we're looking for, but are there any specific subjects? So it's really important for you to see, you know, let's say our design engineering course, for example, because it has that design focus as well as engineering, it's actually the only course at Imperial that only asks for engineering course, sorry, that only asks for mathematics as a compulsory subject. It's not compulsory to have physics. So maybe you're interested in engineering, but you're not doing physics, then it's worth having a look at that for you to get an idea of what you're eligible for. And this is the same for all courses in the UK. Have a look at the overall and are there any specific subject requirements, uh, particularly for scientific courses, it's very important. Now I mentioned here admissions tests. Now, for most courses at Imperial, there is not an admissions test. Um, however, there are a few exceptions. For medicine, you would need to take the BMAT test. So that's the biomedical admissions test. You need to register for that and take that. If you are interested in medicine and you're pursuing that at the moment, then you may well have heard of another test called the UCAT. This is a different test, which some medical schools in the UK ask for. Um, however, Imperial does not accept that one. We only accept the BMAT. So as you're applying, make sure you know which medical test um, is accepted at which university as well. Then for maths, we'd be asking you to take the MAT, so the maths admissions test as well. You need to register for that um, by mid-October. And then also for computing and also maths courses, we may be asking for step papers, to, which will be included in the offers as well. So this will depend on perhaps your performance in the MAT, um, on your predicted grades, um, exactly what the step requirement is. But often the offers will also have a step requirement, which is another mathematics paper, the sixth term examination paper, if you're not familiar with it. So there will be some other courses in the UK that offer, that ask for admissions tests, but those are the only ones at Imperial. Another thing I've got here is interviews. So again, most courses in the UK don't have an interview. This is where Imperial is a bit different. Perhaps we're a little bit more like Oxford and Cambridge in the fact that most of our courses do have an interview. So the exceptions I've got here are the medical biosciences course, no interview, mathematics, no interview, and also life sciences. So that's biology, biochemistry, biotechnology. We don't have any interviews for those. However, all the other subjects, so all of the engineering's, medicine, uh, physics, chemistry, do have an interview. Now, exactly how that takes place obviously differs depending on where you live. If you live in the UK or if you live in the, in the EU and you're able to travel, then we really recommend that you do come to the interview days. It's a great chance for you to have a look around Imperial, get an idea of what it's like, um, and also partly interview us as well, decide is this somewhere that I want to study as well. Uh, the interview tends to have more of an academic focus. It's less about getting to know you as a person. It's actually about, you know, how do you think? Uh, what are your skills? Um, you know, what are some things that you're particularly interested with in your subject area and be able to expand on those as well. And they're slightly different depending on which department that you're studying in. If you are not able to come because you've got an exam clash or you live on the other side of the world and, you know, it would be ridiculous for us to ask you to travel. We do not expect you to travel if you're not able to. Um, again, it depends on the department. Sometimes there'll be an online interview or you may be uh, have a, a short test or an open-ended question to look at as well. So don't worry if you're like, oh my goodness, if I apply to Imperial, I have to travel all the way to an interview. It's not compulsory to travel, but if you're able to, it's a great opportunity to have a look around Imperial and you wouldn't be disadvantaged in your application if you weren't able to travel for the in-person interview. We're gonna be looking at those predicted grades and obviously looking at your personal statements as well. So I'll be touching on that on the next slide. And then the final thing, we do have an English language requirement. So that is across whether you have gone to school in the UK or anywhere in the world, we'll have an English language requirement, which could be your IGCSEs, could be IELTS or TOEFL. There's a number of qualifications that we accept um, when it comes to the English test. I just wanna to touch on making a successful application. And I think this is important whether you do apply to Imperial or another university in the UK. This is some of the things that admissions tutors are looking for. So at Imperial, your personal statement will be read by an academic admissions tutor. It's not, not read, it's not ignored, it's definitely going to be read. And they're going to be looking at, first and foremost, your academic interests, engagement and achievement in the subject you want to study. So as you can see, we have 
a guide of 75 to 90 percent so most of the statement to be focused on the academic interest why do you want to study the course what have you done to prepare what have you read have you done any summer schools have you done any volunteering any internships that are relevant um, that's the really important thing to think about now there isn't any perfect uh, system in terms of uh, what we offer or perfect if I've read this book if I do this specific type of experience will I get in it doesn't really work like that it's about demonstrating you know it's a personal statement for you what have you done why do you find the subject interesting um, maybe touch on career aspirations any relevant competitions academic experience that you've had um, any other wider issues in the industry and that's not to say we don't care or we're not bothered about your extracurriculars but that will be a smaller part of the statement so 10 to 25 percent i always say remember this is going to be read by an academic admissions tutor so if you're applying for mechanical engineering it's being read by a mechanical engineering academic or professor what's going to be interesting to them what's going to show that you are the right person to study mechanical engineering at imperial so you can touch on extracurriculars but think about the skills they've given you have they given you good timekeeping have they given you good um, skills in terms of leadership have they given you the ability to work under pressure those are important things to bring out in the personal statement and a little bit later we'll be actually sharing uh, some a, a link to a video about about personal statements that you can watch after the presentation so do look out for that uh, later when it comes to the the Q&A time and I also wanted to touch just as we come to the end now of the main presentation before we open to questions on the accommodation so we do offer accommodation at Imperial. We have a number of different student halls of residence. Some are five minutes walk away from the campus that I showed you at the very start. Some would be 35 to 40 minutes away by tube. So getting the London Underground, so a little bit further away. Um, but obviously you have to bear in mind your budget. Um, closer to the university, it can be more expensive. Further away can be cheaper, but you have to factor in the travel costs as well. And we actually guarantee accommodation uh, for the first year if you put imperial as your first choice it's not compulsory you don't have to stay in the university accommodation but if you'd like to if you put imperial as your firm choice or first choice then you'd be able to go there so we've got some more details around there um, range of different room types and prices per week um, they're all self-catered halls so you would have to learn to cook a few dishes before you come to imperial but also we have cafes and restaurants to eat on campus and then for the second year most students go into private accommodation but we do have a returners hall or a hall you can be a hall senior which would be looking after first year students but you're able to live in the halls again so just wanted to highlight that, that we do have uh, that accommodation you're able to stay in in your first year and we can support you to find private accommodation as well just to finish on i'm sure you may have questions about these two things important updates about covid19 so Maybe your, some of your exams have been cancelled. Um, maybe you're worried that you won't be able to get a specific internship um, that you wanted to be able to do this summer. Maybe that's because you're applying to medicine or whatever it might be. We are aware of this. Please don't worry yourself too much about this. Um, we're dealing, obviously, our admissions team are dealing with everything for students coming for the 2020 intake so that the coming intake in a few months time uh, we do have an information page online to give an idea of how we're going to be delivering the courses um, in terms of uh, how you know admissions will work how the confirmation of results will work obviously it will be different this year with some exams cancelled so as things become more clear as we move into applications opening for the 2021 entry and beyond which i'm sure many of you are interested in then we will be um, having the uh, you know details on this link here so imperial uk forward slash study forward slash covid19 if you are worried so um, we don't have anything specific at the moment but please be assured we are aware of the situation and uh, we're going to make everything as clear as possible when it comes time to you up for you to apply on ucas also brexit so i'm aware we have quite a lot of students from the eu joining us today who are going to be looking at 21 entry or beyond Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have any confirmation regarding what the tuition fees will be, what the situation will be for funding, would you need a visa in order to start studying. So we do have our Brexit pages on our website, so please do check those. We'll have all the latest information and updates uh, going up there as they become apparent. Uh, again, as soon as there's a notification, we're going to be putting information on our website as well. And no doubt your, your schools and other channels um, in the media will be you know, updating people about this as well. 
And so just coming to the end now, if you did want to find out more, um, we're going to be running virtual open days at the end of June. Uh, we have some a suite of webinars, some of which are recorded. So we have webinars looking at student life. Um, we have, again, if you can just search Imperial webinars um, or drop me an email, I can send you more information about that. Um, different ones are looking at how to choose a course. Um, we have a webinar about what's the interview day like, if you really like to find out more about that. Um, and we do often visit countries and visit schools. Um, at the moment, our activity is online, but we're really looking forward to being able to uh, visit schools and meet students in person once again. Um, if you'd like to sign up to our newsletter, then you can do that online. Uh, you can jump on and sign up um, online on Imperial's website, or you may have seen the poll that's come up. If you do you know, consent to receiving further information, then that will be great. That means that we are able to get in touch with you and can send you more details. And the final thing I want to mention is Please do join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. But we also have a new platform called UniBuddy. So this has been launched a few weeks ago. And this is the opportunity that you can go there. You can search students. These are current students studying at Imperial by their nationality, by what course they're studying. And you're able to chat with them directly. So obviously, I work for the university. If you'd like to be, OK, I'm quite, I'm quite interested, but what is it really like to study there? Or I've got a few questions that would be great to ask a student. Then there's an opportunity to do that through the UniBuddy uh, platform. You can chat to them and uh, you know, ask them really anything that you want to. Um, you're able to do that through that platform. So that's you know, a, a good overview, I think, of Imperial. Um, I just want to show you a video now, it's specifically about our physics course, but I think it gives you a really good flavor of what it's like to be a student at Imperial, to get involved in uh, the research and everything that it's like. So um, I'll leave you to watch that, and then we'll go into a time of Q&A. Physics is a way of looking at the world around you and trying to analyze and understand the observations that you're making and ultimately trying to use that understanding to improve the world for everyone else. The first two years of their study, they are going to be introduced to the core physics. And then, uh, while they develop uh, an interest for specific topics, the uh, last two years of the studies, they can tailor really their degree in this specific interest. You have lots of different areas of physics that you could specialize in, ranging from the sort of very theoretical areas, for example, quantum field theory or cosmology, unification, uh, right into sort of experimental areas laser optics, um, photonics and so on. We have many world leading research departments and within those contain many world leading researchers and those researchers become your teachers, your tutors, your lecturers so you're never far away from leading research. Last year I was fortunate enough to follow a professor that works in the experimental solid states department and I did a Europe with her which is the undergraduate research opportunities program. Following her team I really got to know about what real university level research is like and for me that was really one of the highlights of my education here at Imperial. What makes a good physics student is on the one hand to be open-minded, creative, curious about the world around you and on the other hand to be rigorous, uh, to be perseverant and uh, to have a logical mind. I've always been a really curious person and I thought learning physics at university was a perfect chance to learn more about the subject and uh, help me answer all the fascinating questions about the universe. And also I really enjoyed maths and the rigour of science in general, so it's really exciting. The interview will involve you being asked technical questions, but you really should think of it as an opportunity to ask questions yourself and see how they respond and see whether you know, Imperial is a good place for you. There's a lot of different ways in which the department tries to support the students. One of the important things is the, the personal tutors that students have. Really just to stay on top of the challenges that are coming up to help them navigate what it's like to be in a physics department. I found in my time here that the community is so open and so engaging with the students. If you have a question in physics that is exciting and interesting and nobody seems to have thought about before, you can pursue that and the university in my experience has helped me do that. Students, staff are ordinary people, dedicated, hardworking, but really enjoy and involved in their subject. And I think that's what makes Imperial extremely special. It's not a case of you have to fit into Imperial because everybody's unique. So there's no fitting in to do apart from to apply yourself to your potential.
Fantastic. That's great. Um, so we'll move now to the Q&A. Thank you very much for sending all of your questions in. Uh, we've got lots of them, so I'm going to try and get through as many as I can, and hopefully they're going to be also interesting you for uh, all of you as well. Um, so if you bear with me, I will go through as many as I can. Uh, just to note that you'll be get a link to the recording, so if there's any information or links that you'd like to have, we're just going to post uh, now in the chat um, a link to the open days information so you can sign up to receive more information about the virtual open day if you'd like to as well. Um, and obviously you have on the slide as well my email contact. So for whatever reason we don't get to your question or you'd like to information or questions about uh, Brexit or COVID-19, how it's going to affect things. So I'll answer those as best as I can. Um, however, there, um, you know, there's, as I said, there's, there's not a huge amount more I can say about those at the moment for 2021 entry. So I'll get to some questions. So I've got a question from Catherine. Are you hoping to welcome students to medicine this year? Uh, so yes, we're hoping to welcome students for 2020 entry across all of our courses. Um, there should be an announcement um, on the, tomorrow, actually, on the 28th of May, with further information about how teaching will take place, um, how practical experience, time in labs, these type of things will be affected or, or may be affected um, going forward. So I don't know specifically, but we're going to have an announcement um, this week and then there may be further information next week as well in terms of exactly how things are going to work. But um, hope that, you know, hopefully when you'll be starting studies in 2021 or beyond, actually um, we wouldn't need to have the same uh, restrictions, there wouldn't be the same issues available. Uh, a question about the requirements for medicine, specifically the BMAT, if they will remain the same. So yes, with the BMAT, um, that will continue to be part of our entry requirements and one of the methods of assessment we use for medicine. Um, and with the BMAT, it's worth saying we don't have a specific score you need to attain, but each year there will be a BMAT cutoff score. So there will be a score um, that our medicine admissions team decide, okay, anyone with a score below this, Unfortunately, we won't be able to take them any further with the application process. That's just because of how competitive it is. So on our medicine uh, page online, you can see what last year's BMAT cutoff scores were for you to get an idea of what it was like when you're starting to do any practice papers. Question from Veronica about how foundation programs work at Imperial. So at Imperial, we don't actually have any foundation programs. Entry for all of our courses is for year one as an undergraduate uh, student. Um, so when applying to us, you'll be applying for a specific course. We don't have a, a year zero or a foundation uh, going in as well. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we don't really accept many foundation programs going in. You would need to have a specific qualification that we accept to go into uh, straight away. Quite a lot of questions about scholarships as well. So. The scholarships that we do have at undergraduate level are fairly limited, but the main scholarship we have is called the President's Undergraduate Scholarship, and that's the President of Imperial College, uh, who the President they're talking about in that scholarship. And that is up to £5,000 off your fees. It's something that you would be for automatically if you apply to Imperial before the 15th of October UCAS deadline. So that's the early UCAS deadline. If you apply, by the 15th of October, you're automatically considered for that. And it's based on merit. So each department has a number of scholarships to give out each year. And students that apply by the deadline who have very high achieving in school will be considered for that as well. We have a scholarship search tool as well on our website where you can have a look what you're eligible for. Um, although I do have to say, like I said, it's quite limited. So if you're looking and thinking uh, there isn't a huge amount available, um, that's because we don't have a huge amount available across all of our different programs. Some scholarships may be department specific as well. So that's why it's a useful thing to use as well. Question from Alejandra about do Imperial offer support or facilities for students that want to become entrepreneurs? The answer is yes, we definitely do. So the enterprise lab that I mentioned at the start, that is our hub for entrepreneurs. And we also have an advanced hack space as well. So I guess the 
Enterprise Lab is for offering in-person support, workshops, advice sessions, um, the opportunity to get mentoring from Imperial graduates who have started a business before, to have that, um, that pitch and mix event where you're able to meet other people, maybe just to start ideas, competitions to get involved in. And at the Advanced Hack Space, that's actually the place where we have 3D printers, 3D printers workshops, uh, technicians to help support you in terms of building prototypes. We have a um, chemical lab there as well. So really whatever type of um, business or industry you're interested in going into, we offer support with advice and competitions, but also in terms of building prototypes using new equipment and workshops as well. A question from Anna, can we still apply if we don't have an international school test like IGC or IB? The answer Yes, we do accept a range of other qualifications. Um, so we do have some more general advice online, but I just really recommend if you really would like to know, okay, specifically for my qualification, I can't see it listed on the prospectus, then please do just drop me an email. So my email is on that web page uh, on the, the slide just up there now. Um, please feel free to email me and I can give you the specific requirements for your um, for the course that you're taking, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be an international school test. They're just some of the ones we often get. Um, so that's why I use those as examples. I have a question about do we offer a dual degree with engineering and business? Unfortunately, we don't. It's just going to be an engineering program through the business school. There are maybe opportunities for you to take. We have like a business for professional scientists and engineers module, which students can choose to, to take, but it would just be one module. So it's something that's really helpful. We obviously have sessions you can get involved in at the enterprise lab. But again, this would be outside of your main studies. So it wouldn't be a dual degree or engineering and business degree. It would be an engineering degree and there's some opportunities to do some business related uh, modules as well. A question about would a student need to have studied calculus in secondary school before applying? So we are going to be looking for often with lots of our courses, mathematics, uh, chemistry, physics, engineering for a very strong mathematics grade, but we do have students coming from different uh, schools, different academic backgrounds, obviously, as well. Um, and there may be different emphasis on different parts of mathematics, depending on where you're coming from. I would say, don't worry if whatever reason you feel like your qualification or what you're doing is maybe not as strong as, as someone else's. In the first, definitely first semester or definitely first year at Imperial, we want to bring everyone up to the, exactly the same level, whatever your background, however much calculus, however, whether you've done a further, a, further maths, A level, or whether you have a high level six mathematics or, or seven, whatever it may be, we want to bring people up to the same level. And I have a question about um, the imperial requirements are very high. Um, so if they were to not uh, get those grades, what's the possibility to get in? Really great question. So we do, uh, in general, when you list on our website or in the prospectus a certain grade, if that is the minimum, uh, that will be considered. So sometimes the offers may actually be higher as, than what's considered. So you, you'll see in the prospectus or online, we have a typical offer as well as the minimum. So the minimum is to be considered. So even if you think, oh, the typical offer is quite high, but actually, as long as you meet the minimum and your predicted grades, we'd really encourage you to apply because it's not just grades we're looking at. We will look at your whole application. There's the interview for most of our courses as well. Um, when it comes to the confirmation, so when you receive your results and they're sent to us, if you have you know, narrowly missed your offer, then the admissions tutors will review your application and see, okay, they've only just missed it. Can we still um, confirm their place at Imperial or not? But obviously, if you do miss your offer, it's, it's not guaranteed. Um, and the reason our requirements are so high is because of just how competitive the courses are at Imperial. We have a huge amount of people applying, um, which is again why we have the interviews as well. So um, if you do, if you predicted the minimum or above, we'd really encourage you to apply. Uh, if if not, then you know, again, it's maybe worth chatting with a, a counsellor or again, uh, feel free to drop me an email. I can give more information. Question specifically, information for Brazilian students coming from non-international secondary schools. Um, that will really depend on what type of school you're coming from, what qualifications. So again, if you do have any really specific questions, uh, feel free to drop me an email. I'll be happy to answer those. Uh, a question about the required IBHL classes for computer science. 
So the only specific requirement is higher level math seven. That's the minute you must have higher level math seven. Uh, we do also have some other recommended subjects. So typically other numerate or scientific related subjects are really useful, but it's only mathematics, which is the compulsory IB high level or whatever qualification you're doing, you must have a very, very high grade of mathematics. I have a question from Diego about how important are GCSEs in the application process? So the most important thing is your predicted grades and your qualification that you'll be finishing high school or secondary school with. So IB, A-levels or whatever other qualification that you're doing, that is the most important thing. We will look at your academic background, your academic history, so GCSEs or whatever qualification you do it did before uh, to see that that's consistent with your performance, that your predicted grades are realistic. Maybe in terms of comparing two very similar candidates with very similar IB, uh, predictions for example we might look at the, at the GCSE grades but don't worry if you feel oh I wish my GCSE grades were a bit higher if you're predicted at least the minimum grades at Imperial again I would encourage you to make an application I've got a question about the different mathematics courses in IB so AA and AI um, and does it matter which one that you're taking? So we actually now have on our website specific advice and guidance for 20, 2021 entry on what the uh, admissions are going to be looking for. Many departments will accept both AA or AI mathematics higher level, as long as you have the right grade. So a six or a seven, depending on what course and what we're asking for. Um, however, some have said if you are doing AI, you may also be asked to take a step paper, so an additional mathematics test. Um, some courses, so aeronautics, computing, mechanical engineering, which are some of the most competitive courses at Imperial, we are asking, we have a preference for AA. They will accept both, um, but there's a preference for AA. Um, and if you are you know, looking further ahead, if your school offers you the option and you're really thinking somewhere like Imperial or somewhere like Imperial is where I'd really love to study, then uh, we would say if it's possible and you're able to, then a, uh, Mathematics AA will prepare you uh, particularly well for starting your studies at Imperial. But for 2021 entry, we're accepting both. There may just be some other requirements. A question about doing dual qualifications. So someone that's doing the Bachillerato in Spain and the IB, would they be taken into account as a whole or separately? Usually your offer would just be for one qualification. So it would be just for the IB or just for the bachillerato um, when you are when you are making that application. So I'd be looking for you to to meet the requirements in in just one of those uh, qualifications. OK, a few questions in. Bear with me. I'm just going to have a quick read of them and then we'll keep going with these. So will Imperial be more flexible regarding work experience activities uh, because of the current situation? Uh, the answer is yes, we will have more flexibility. We're already you know, seeing that in admissions at the moment that, you know, in some countries at the moment, students can't take their exams, there's going to be different assessments. So actually the grades and the way they're going to be sent are going to be quite different. So we're already exercising some flexibility uh, with that at the moment. Um, admissions haven't made an official announcement about exactly how things will be looking. And again, we don't know exactly what the situation will be even a month, two months uh, from now at the moment. But that's certainly something that we'll bear in mind. And we're very, as I said in the presentation, we're very international university. So we are gonna get applications from all over the world. People, everyone has been affected in some way. People will have been affected to different degrees. So we will be taking that into account. So again, don't worry or feel like you need to spend half your personal statement explaining the pandemic and why you weren't able to do this specific internship. Um, Question about the, the links for the virtual open days that they've been posted now. Um, does Imperial have any well-known sports clubs or teams? So I didn't mention that because I was focusing specifically on studies, but we do have a great uh, students union. So the Imperial College Union, we have over 370 different clubs, projects and societies to get involved in. Huge amounts of sports clubs and you can play at a competitive level against other universities. You could play more of a social or recreational level. It's really up to you. Um, I guess we have we have a strong basketball team, um, perhaps is the most well-known one, but we have everything from um, horse riding, we have uh, volleyball, we have a huge, huge, huge range of sports that you can get involved in as well. Um, 
question, is it possible to take modules from other faculties as well as your chosen course? The quick answer for that is, is no, it's not possible to do modules in other courses. However, within your department, you have a huge range of modules that you'll be able to choose as you progress through your degree. So that's one of the main things as you're choosing Imperial or if you're advising students about Imperial, you're going to be choosing a specific area. You're going to be specialised within that area, obviously within physics or within um, biomedical science, whatever it might be, you have a number of different areas that you can focus on, but you will be specialised in the area. Um, you can do some other modules like uh, business modules or a language module, something separate, but they are, you can't be taking engineering and say, I'm really interested in this physics module, I'd like to take that just because of the timetabling and the class sizes. Unfortunately, it's not possible to do that. Um, what about having a part-time job during studies? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, do a part-time job. Um, we recommend no more than 10 hours uh, of, of working in your job uh, during term time per week, so no more than 10 hours per week in order to balance your studies. Um, some students find that able to do more part-time work towards the beginning of their studies and as it gets more intense as they progress on, they may have to cut that down a little bit. But we certainly have jobs on campus, maybe working as a student ambassador, giving tours um, or working in the student union shop. Um, these are jobs on campus that are often quite casual, so you're able to, by casual I mean you can sign up for the hours that you're available uh, to do as well. Got a question about the admission percentage. So we have um, on in the prospectus and also on the course page, you can see what the admissions ratio was for the previous year. So you can get an idea of how many applications um, were got admission. Uh, so you can see you can see the ratio of how many applications got admission as well. So our most competitive program. Uh, if you're interested, is computing, uh, which had an 18 to 1 application ratio last year. Um, and then so some of our life science courses are still very competitive, but they have an admission ratio of around 3 to 1. So it is worth having a look if you, you know, are really interested in what is the most competitive course and what are the most competitive courses at Imperial. Question about personal statements, the most important thing in a personal statement, uh, specifically for medicine. So if you are interested in medicine, we do look for so, usually look for some type of relevant work experience or volunteering. Obvi well, I, I, I know that medicine will be coming out with some more information and advice about this for 2021 entry because it just may not have been possible for you to do the experience that you were intending to do because of the current uh, situation with the pandemic and lockdown in your country. Um, so I'd say maybe send me an email or, or um, check back at Imperial site um, a bit, uh, in kind of August, September time when we have more information and updates about that. Um, is there a preference for a third subject specifically for our biological sciences? If we if if we don't if we don't specify in the prospectus or uh, on the website, so it's the, the same information in both places, uh, whichever one you're looking at. If we don't specify a third subject, it, it really can be anything. We're not looking. So if you if we ask for biology, chemistry, and another A or another six, high level six or whatever it might be, it can be any other subject. But you must have the compulsory subjects. Uh, then we have benefits of doing the the MSI, so that's the integrated masters uh, in uh, integrated masters courses within natural sciences. Um, there's a specific advantage if you are thinking specifically of going into research, if you'd like to take things uh, deeper into your subject, it has the same advantages of doing that integrated masters program. Um, if you are thinking about you know doing a masters in general anyway when you start the course, then it is a slightly faster. Uh, a slightly cheaper way to achieve uh, a master's at Imperial by doing the integrated route as well. Um, so you'll see there's a pop-up for some personal statement advice that I mentioned. So that's a link from uh, one of my colleagues uh, with some more advice about that. So I'll answer a few more questions. Um, and again, if I don't get to yours, please do drop me an email. I'll get back to you uh, by the end of the week if you do have any specific questions. Um, are extracurriculars an important aspect inside the Imperial student life? Yes, they are. It's a, a really important part of student life. Um, so Imperial does have a reputation of students. There's a, you know, a lot of time to, um, a lot of time you need to spend studying. It is hard work. But what I hear again and again from current students is that 
once you're able to manage your time, which maybe takes the first semester to kind of work out exactly how to do that, managing the study load, then there's a huge amount of things to get involved in. You have everything that London has to offer, uh, everything that's uh, on campus at the university. So I mentioned we have over 370 different clubs and societies. That's actually a lot more than some universities that are bigger than Imperial. So there is a huge range of things from um, from music to sport, um, cultural ones, ones around food, ones around reading, ones around board games, really, really huge amount of things that you can get involved in as well. And uh, yeah, students often say it's one of the you know best times to kind of make friends with people outside of your course. Your accommodation is to get involved in those things as well um, and to have activities and things that you can do outside of just studying. So you don't become just a study uh, robot while you're doing that as well. Uh, question, do you offer social sciences alongside biomedical sciences? It's not possible to do a joint degree again, but we do have, uh, so I mentioned briefly, we had the option, you can do modules, uh, do a language module, or we have some other social science modules that you can do what, through what's called the Horizons program. Um, and you're able to take those alongside your study as well. Uh, we have a question to study uh, biomedical engineering, is the bioengineering course better than medicine? Yes, it is. So the bioengineering department offer a biomedical engineering course uh, specifically, and we have our um, molecular bioengineering as well. So they offer a slightly different approach in terms of bioengineering. But if you want to do biomedical engineering, the bioengineering department is where you'll find biomedical engineering and biomedical engineering as well. Uh, for computing, if we're taking the mat, do we also have to take the step? So for computing, you do not need to take the mat. They don't request students to take the mat. It's just mathematics. Um, however, you may, be, you may be asked to take the step in part of your offer. Um, do students to apply for design engineering have to send a portfolio? No, you don't have to send a portfolio. If you do have one, you may want to take it with you to uh, the interview or at the virtual interview, but it's certainly not expected. It's for students who need strong mathematics, who are interested in engineering, but also um, are creative and want to use their creative and design ability as well. So it's not an expectation that you have studied art or have a specific portfolio before. Obviously, if you have, that's great that you can show that, but certainly, We've heard uh, stories of current students who've been interviewed who it took their portfolio with them, but actually there wasn't time to look at the portfolio because of the, the other interview questions that were taking place. Uh, are offers always conditional for IB students? Uh, if you haven't finished your IB, yes, they're always conditional. So we won't make unconditional offers unless you have finished your qualification. Um, which courses require the, the MAT or the MAT or the STEP examinations? So mathematics, MAT, just mathematics. For step, you might be asked to take the step in your offer for computing and for mathematics. And then, like I said, check on the website. For some courses, they may have said, if you were doing uh, higher level maths AI, they might request a step as part of your condition. So I'll just do uh, three or four more questions uh, before we finish off. Um, is it necessary to study biology for the bioengineering course? No, it is not. We'll be looking for uh, physics and maths. Um, we have, let me have a quick look. Minimum for the European baccalaureate. That will depend on which, which course um, that you are taking specifically, but I guess I could say, yes, we definitely accept the European baccalaureate. And where you see specific subjects that we need, we'd be looking for um, often uh, eight or nine or above in the specific subjects. Um, am I allowed to apply to two branches of engineering like aeronautics and computing? Yes, you are. Uh, you can apply for more than one course at Imperial. However, because of, as I've mentioned, the comparisons are very competitive, you're only able to submit one personal statement for all five of your choices. Or so all of the courses you apply to on UCAS and including all of the courses you apply to at Imperial. So we just ask students to think about, can I do a really strong personal statement to you know, a really great competitive university that's bringing in information about aeronautics and computing? Um, 
And maybe the answer for you is yes, you know, discuss that with, with your, your family, your teachers and think about, OK, I, I really can't decide between these two courses. Can I do a strong personal statement? But also think about what if I do like a personal statement that's OK for aeronautics and OK for computing? You know, it could be uh, potentially damaging your chances um, when it comes to applying to these competitive courses. So, yes, you can apply to two, but you have to think really carefully before you um, do that. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, if I didn't get to your question, then I'm very sorry. Um, please do uh, send me an email. So my email is there. I'll get back to you by the end of the week, uh, as we mentioned. Um, thank you so much for uh, attending. Thank you so much for this incredible session and answering so many questions. Again, we couldn't answer everyone, but we will get back to you if you have clicked yes on the on the consent form. As for SRT, it was pleasure hosting that webinar today and seeing Lawrence live from London. Uh, my name is Svetlina Ivova, and I hope to see you at our upcoming SRT webinars in June. You may find a button that we just shared with you leading to our schedule. And we wish you a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay curious, and see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.